Welcome to Women Talking Soccer. I'm your host, Carrie Taylor. The goal of this podcast is to amplify the voices of all women who love the beautiful game. Whether you're on the field, cheering from the stands, work in the business, want to be in the business, or are a passionate change maker, your voice is important. This podcast is presented by Women in Soccer. Women in Soccer is a network of women and allies involved in our favorite sport. You can join Women in Soccer for free online at womeninsoccer.org. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're here today on Women Talking Soccer with uh, one of my good friends, Tracy Ham, who is currently the head women's coach at UC Davis and an overall badass woman. And so, Tracy, thank you so much for coming on today. I, I'm so excited to, to get into this conversation. Um, can you just start off by kind of introducing yourself and giving the listeners a little bit of about your background? Sure. Um, yes, I am born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, grew up playing for a couple of different clubs. Like most people nowadays, um, I ended up going to Cal for uh, my four years of college. It was amazing. I had the best time. Go Bears. Um, after college, I wasn't really sure, like most people, what you want to do. And um, I ended up sticking with soccer and coaching uh, in the club system. And then the pro league, the WPS started, which was amazing. So it gave me an opportunity to play pro. Um, I was with the San Jose pride and then with the Atlanta beat mm -hmm. after two seasons, I went to grad school at BU, uh, which was awesome. I got my master's in sports psychology. Uh, and then I moved back to California because it's really hard to stay away <laughs> from California if you Absolutely. are from here. <laughs> um, and I got my first head coaching job at Santa Rosa Junior College, where I was the head coach there for three seasons before I got the head coaching job at San Francisco State, where I was there for four years and now finally at UC Davis and would have been my second season um, yeah. if you know, <laughs> we weren't in the current situation. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's awesome, Tracy. And, and, you know, I think that you have been, at least for me and a lot of other coaches, um, you know, a, someone to look to in, in the game, um, probably for, for me, for a couple of things, um, at, at Davis, you have an all female staff and also some of the challenges that you've gone through, um, to, to get coaching licenses and, and to, to be a strong woman in the game of soccer that, that really resonates with me. And, and can you kind of talk to the listeners a little bit more about your experience getting your UEFA, A, which I know, I, I don't know the statistics on it, but I think you're like one of maybe a handful. <laughs> Yes. So it's a small percentage, less than 1% of all UEFA A license holders are women. Um, and I'm one of two American women that have uh, the UEFA A. So, um, you know, it was interesting process for sure. Um, I, you know, obviously being from the United States, I had started to pursue some of the licensing um, through the NSCA, which is now obviously the USC. Um, you know, that was the, the route that I took. And so when I was done playing and, you know, realized that coaching was going to be, um, you know, my path and, and my passion, you know, I really wanted to focus on my, you know, professional development in that way. Uh, so I applied to be waived into um, the U.S. Soccer C license because I had done my E and my F back in the day, you know, mm -hmm. when I think oh, it was like yeah. 20 coaching yeah. club. Um, and so the, the waiver, um, required you to have played, uh, three years professionally and I had only played two, um, but there wasn't a pro league from 2006 to 2009 after I'd graduated college. And so I had this moment of like, well, where was I supposed to play pro? Where was I supposed to get that experience? And I had played in yeah. the WPSL, which was, which all the defunct WUSA players had mm -hmm. played in at that point. So basically it was a pro league. We just weren't being paid shocker. Right. Um, <laughs> You know, and so I was like, no, I'm like playing professionally against like the best players. Like there's national team players that are, you know, at this level. And anyway, long story short, I ended up getting denied. And I, I don't think that it was a, a malicious, you know, attempt to exclude women by U.S. soccer at all. I think that they just written the rule for men and hadn't really thought, oh, this might alienate half of our demographic. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so I saw that there was a, a foreign license waiver and I didn't think, I didn't know that other countries um, had licenses also. I thought that was like a very American thing. You have to have a license to do this. Mm-hmm. And so I, I saw um, that, you know, UEFA and, and all of Europe has a licensing process to get your coaching badges as well. So I decided to apply um, to the Welsh uh, FA had mm-hmm. um a residential course. Cause most of the courses in Europe, you have to live there. Cause it's like every weekend they don't really do like week long residential courses. Like we do here. Um, cause the country's so small, right. It's right. easy to go places on the weekends. Um, and so I saw that Wales had a, uh, a course and you had to be a pro player, um, to attend. And I was like, well, I doubt that, you know, they're going to acknowledge my playing experience if my own country didn't, ex- you know, right. acknowledge it. And so, I applied anyway. I went through the whole process and they ended up letting me in to the UEFA B. Um, and I, you know, it was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. So showed up, I was terrified, but I got through it and I loved it. I loved every second of it. Um, and got my UEFA B and they, uh, told me that they were going to do a UEFA A the following year. And it's about a two year process. So, uh, they asked if I would apply and I did, and I got in and, Again, another wild couple years of very, very uh, difficult work, um, especially not being in the country. Everything's obviously remote, um, Mm -hmm. filming a lot of sessions, a lot of mentoring sessions, feedback, all the things, and uh, was able to pass um, last May, so May in 2019. Okay. Yeah, and, you know, for the listeners that may not know, there's a documentary uh, <laughs> about Tracy and her experience um, called Coach the Movie, and it it kind of outlines, you know, what it what it's really like day in and day out uh, being the only woman in in the room in a male dominated environment. And the luckily, Coach the Movie is available on the Women in Soccer website, and I highly, 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 highly recommend it to not only every woman but but men as well, because it's hard being the only female in the room. And and sometimes the guys don't understand some of the things that might, you know, they might be doing that kind of mansplain or aggravates those of us that are, that are as knowledgeable and, you know, trying to just be a coach like they are. And uh, can you talk a little bit more about the movie and, and just, you know, what it, what it maybe meant to you to like, see yourself on the screen and, and have that out there, um, inspiring, you know, other women. Sure. Yeah. Like you said, carrots, um, basically what the movie kind of does, it's 25 minutes. So it's a short doc and they took about 50 hours of film and made it into 25 minutes. I mean, the, the producers and the directors are brilliant and, um, it, it really highlights kind of just like the nuances, like you said, um, and, that, that a lot of women have to experience, not just obviously in like uh, the sports industry, but, you know, in boardrooms. And um, I think it translates to any industry that women work in at this point, um, which makes it kind of accessible and interesting, I think, to a lot of different communities and, you know, a lot of different people. Um, But yeah, it shows those little, um, maybe not intentionally, you know, trying to patronize women, but just Mm -hmm. little comments and little, you know, side remarks or, Um, you know, just again, like the environment that's created, um, to, I don't want to say that men are intentionally making you feel like less than, but that's certainly, uh, that's kind of a takeaway. (laughs) It's like, that's just, that's just nature. That's like the nature of it. Unfortunately, this is a four, four, two formation. This is a three. And you're like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah. You're like, (laughs) I got it. I got it. Thanks so much. I've watched this before. Yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah. So there's just little, you know, little things like that, but, um, the whole experience was amazing because, um, you know, initially, like I wasn't doing the UEFA to, for any other reason than just to learn the game and understand more about the X's and the O's. Um, I always felt like I had a really good grasp on the kind of the mental side of the game and the ability to build culture and values within a program and a team. Um, but I didn't ever, I was never really exposed to, um, like how to, how to actually like coach the game and be able to watch, watch a game, extract detail, put together a training session, um, you know, and the different, you know, kind of processes of, 
of how to actually coach by unit, um, you know, player development and look at key relationships and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, how are you, how does a four, four, two with a box midfield defend against a three, five, two, and how do you defend in the final third versus the middle third for, you know, defensive third and just really specific things like that. And that's what the UEFA, um, you know, kind of coaching license course was made phenomenal. It'd break the game down to the point where you're like, this is so detailed, like right, over the top right. detailed, but it, it challenged me and it tested me in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, the film, you really kind of get to see, um, my mind racing in a lot of ways and put in different situations where you have to present that information to people that know less than you, that know more <laughs> than you, that know right. the same as you. Um, and you have to really be able to speak to everybody in the room. And that's mm-hmm. one of the most difficult things as a coach is I think when you're looking at, you know, coaching from the bottom up or the top down, or however you want to look at it, you have to be able to explain things Mm -hmm. in so many different ways. So everybody learns and really being in that environment. That's what really the test was, was, can you explain something? Can you provide feedback? Can you extract detail and be able to communicate it in a way that every single person in the room understands? And you're Mm not, you know, you're not, um, you're not demeaning anybody. You're mm-hmm. not patronizing anybody. Um, you're speaking to very intelligent, you know, very experienced coaches. Um, so it, it was, it's great. And so, yeah, the, the movie is, uh, it's hard. I've seen it so many times now that, <laughs> you know, watching it, it doesn't even, I don't feel like I'm watching myself. It's like this right. random person. Yeah. Um, but the first couple of times, I actually probably say like the first eight times watching it, uh, like, I, I would cry in the times when I cry in the movie. Cause I could put myself back in that spot, like in the taxi cab. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, I thought about how much hard work went into it. And so it's easy for me to get emotional when I watch it. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, that was so hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, again, I recommend everyone watch coach the movie and you, you referenced, you know, in the movie where, where, when you finish, you, you actually, you know, let that emotion out. And that's what that's what resonated with me just because it's like, God, I did it. You know, like I, I did it. I was the only person in the room. I was brave. I was, you know, I showed my knowledge and I got through it and, you know, having seen that like emotional side of you, like just that's, that's amazing. And and some people might go, Oh, you know, Oh, women cry. It's like, no, like that's a sign of like, I did it. I battled the challenge and if I can do it, you can do it and you can do it and you can do it. So that vulnerability is, is really powerful. So absolutely. Yeah. It was a, it's hard, I think for coaches to, um, you know, we're supposed to be stoic and very consistent and even keeled and all those things. And I think that those are important qualities, but we're also people, (laughs) you know, and I was, this is hard to admit, it feels uncomfortable, but, um, you know, like I was really proud of myself. You should be you know, and that was, it was a weird feeling. I didn't know what was happening. Right. I'm like, why am I, why am I crying? Like I had, and you can see me in the movie. I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing this, you know, but it was because I was really proud of myself. I'd, like you said, I'd gotten through something and came out better for it at the end of it, you know? Yeah. Well, awesome. So on to college coaching, um, share, you know, I think, I think you and I had talked offline and, and you had said that, um, you are like one of five, uh, colleges that has an all female staff. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about why that's important to you and why you, you, you've intentionally done that. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's intentional. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, every, at all three of my programs where I've been the head coach, um, I've had an all female staff, um, the exception, I had a couple of volunteers that were men. Um, but, uh, (sighs) Yeah, I think when I when I look at how the game needs to develop for women, um, we all, you know, one of the the key questions is how do we how do we grow the game? How do we get more women involved in coaching? Coaching, I'm like, well, it's pretty simple. You hire them, right? You know, and it's not like there's this you know big aha. Oh, what a concept, you know. <laughs> and um, so for me, it's like if I'm gonna be, um, I don't want to say like a leader, but if I'm gonna you know, walk the walk and talk the talk and, and really be who I am, um, and, and put my words into action, then Mm -hmm. I have to follow through on that also. And so, um, 
I, I think that women need a chance and they need an opportunity. And unfortunately we're still in a position where we're scared to ask, or we're scared to put ourselves out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, I'm like, I'll just force you, <laughs> you know? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I, it's okay to be, you know, uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just want to, I want to obviously inspire other women that are females to, you know, hire, hire women, um, on their staff as well. Um, and just provide opportunity. And and it's like, after you give women the chance, if they don't prove themselves or they don't, it doesn't work out. It's okay. You know, yeah. then, then you can move in a different direction. But like, I think women, once they're given an opportunity, it's like, yes, like, the, the amount of buy-in and loyalty and respect and passion and drive that they have once they're afforded that opportunity, it's unmatched. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause they're not like, they're not just like grateful for the opportunity. Right. Like they're there to like prove like, okay, I got my chance. I'm going to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's been something that I felt like has been true everywhere that I've been with every single woman that I've had the opportunity to work with is, um, they've just been so committed, you know, Mm -hmm. and there's never, any sort of like big timing or like pissing mm-hmm. contest, if that makes sense. <laughs> no, like, it does totally. You know, we all know, know, we, us women know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. It's like, great. How, how do we collaborate? How we do this together? You know? And I think that that's one of the, also just from a, an optic standpoint for your players, right. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, here's women that are all different backgrounds that know how to work together, that support each other, that communicate well, that make each other better. Um, I mean, that's inspiring for players also to see, you know, mm-hmm. and be like, oh, I can, we, we can compete and we can disagree, mm-hmm. but ultimately we're in this together and we're going to make each other better. Yeah. No, oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, so how did you come to be involved with the, with, with the women in soccer group? Can you kind of talk about how that happened and, and why, why you are, you know, involved and why you think people should join? Sure. Uh, so the producer of the film coach, um, is the founder (laughs) of women in soccer. Um, so Courtney Levinson, uh, she's also a Cal alum. Um, so I've known her for a long time now. Um, but the, the, you know, Courtney and I talked quite a bit about what, what's next, right? So this film comes out and we're like, cool, we made a movie like now what, right? Um, what are we going to do with this? And so we really started to think about like, it's more of like a call to action, right? And it's a conversation piece. It's a conversation starter. Um, and so, you know, we just had a lot of different, you know, kind of late night combos of like, Hey, what's next. And, um, Courtney was trying, uh, to, you know, get a seat at the table with a lot of different organizations to start, you know, imparting change and getting more women involved in positions of power and authority and in the coaching world and all of those different things. And um, I think that she just kind of had an epiphany moment where she's like, I don't need a seat. I'm just going to build my own table and mm-hmm. invite people there. And that was, I mean, amazing. And that's kind of where it all started. And then, you know, we started to kind of build the team out from, coach the movie that, mm-hmm. you know, some of the founding experts are, were in that original group. Um, and then really kind of identify key people that we knew were going to be awesome. Like yourself, um, you know, that we're going to add value and depth and, um, experience and, and passion, all those things that women in soccer is, uh, is just really building a phenomenal network. And so, um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see what it's become because, you know, six months ago we weren't even close. It was an idea. Yeah. Um, and now it's, it's a, it's an action. It's, there's something tangible. It's amazing. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and for our listeners, you can go to, uh, women in soccer.org and find out all the information. Uh, there's the launch is on December 9th and we're super excited about that. And, you know, the one for me, it's been really inspiring to, to be surrounded by other women who are doing amazing things but have often felt alone because they're doing amazing things in NorCal and then, you know, in New York and here and there. And there's a lot of collective power in collaboration and, you know, being there for each other through the challenges and the ups and downs and and all of that. So, um, you know, there's, there's power in numbers. So if people are interested, it's open to, to all women, it's not just coaches, 
it's fans, it's marketing people, CEOs, G general managers, uh, you know, people that might not even be in the game yet, but want to get involved. So that's, that's one of the tenets that it's open to all, all women and, and male allies. We can't forget yes. our, our male allies. Um, not, not all men are knuckleheads. So <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, so talk to me a little bit about like how, how you also look to maybe get some of your players involved in the game afterwards? Are there any things that you're doing? Have you identified any players on your team and said like, Hey, you'd be a great coach or you'd be a great general manager. Talk to, talk mm -hmm. to us about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so going back to me forcing people to do things, um, <laughs> I, at San Francisco state and at UC Davis, I basically forced them all to do their grassroots license, mm -hmm. uh, through us soccer to just start the process. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, for me, the, the, a lot of the players, you know, they get part-time jobs and they work as baristas or they work, you know, at different retail shops, whatever. And I'm like, you guys, you can like crush coaching kids, right. Mm -hmm. And like doing club or doing individual training. And so, um, you know, I'm like, you don't even have to think about a practice, run whatever I did at right. that practice Just and then go to your me. club practice, do the same thing. That's all. Yeah. We're all, you know, we're all thieves. We all steal each other's exactly. ideas and stuff. Exactly. It's all about execution. So, um, yeah, so I just really wanted to get the, at least provide the option, you know, and that's something that, uh, again, a lot of women don't do is if you don't know something or you're not a hundred percent, you know, feel in your mind that you're capable of it, you don't even give yourself the chance, right? You just immediately, you know, you're fearful of it and you, you push it aside. So, you know, I was like, let's just get, if they, maybe they don't even know that they want to be a coach. Right. Mm -hmm. And so by providing them an opportunity to get their grassroots license, you know, they, they already started it. The process has started. So right. it's their choice to continue on. Um, there's a couple of players that have done it, like completed the whole course. Um, and I think they're going to start, you know, they're going to go to get their C in a couple of years, which is amazing. Um, you know, they really liked it and they started coaching club and, um, you know, if anything, I'm like guys, it can be a part-time job. Like you can work full-time and go coach. Like that's, yeah. Unfortunately, that's the nature of coaching, right? It's like most people have to work full time also doing something else. But um, yeah, it's been it's been really fun. And there's definitely players that are um super motivated that have taken it and run with it. And um, you know, when we do camps or the first one raising their hand, I'd love to work camps. And uh, you know, I when I went to uh to Cal, like I didn't go to Cal with the intention of being a division one head soccer coach in the NCAA, mm -hmm. right? Like I was like, I'm going to be a stockbroker and I'm going to be like crushing. I'm going to move to wall street, you know, and like, right. whatever, you know, work for Google and all this stuff, which <laughs> a lot of my teammates did good for them. I'm like, they're living on like yachts now. And I'm yeah. like, Oh, I'm just in my little cubicle, like no big deal. <laughs> um, you know, but I'm super happy and I love my job. Um, but again, like sometimes you just don't even know, you don't know what you want until mm -hmm. it's there or until you at least open a door. Mm -hmm. for yourself. So I'd give yourself the option if you want to stick it out or not, but, uh, yeah, it's been fun watching the players coach and, and, um, seeing how hard it is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's not easy, yeah. um, but it's good. Yeah. No, that that's great. And you just made me laugh when you reference being a stockbroker. Cause I was pre I was pre-med and I was supposed to go to med school. And then, then I told my dad, I wanted to be a soccer coach and he about, <laughs> shot me, but yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, you get to, when you get to live your passion and, and actually make a little bit of money doing it, you know, right. it's, it's, it's not work. You go in and you're like, okay, like let's have fun today. So that's part of my day every yeah. time on the yeah. field. So it's all, it's all good. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, 2020 has been a crazy year, COVID, all of that, but it's also been a really great year, I think for women. Um, and a lot of firsts, like, you know, first female referee to ref an MLS game and first female referee to, you know, do a champions league game. And, you know, there, there's been some, uh, equity decisions within us women's soccer. So like what excites you about the future of women's soccer, not only, you know, here in the U S but internationally, like what, it, to me, it's like, we're at a tipping point. And, and so my question is like, what excites you about the future of women's soccer? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think this year in particular, obviously, is there's been a lot of, you know, negative things that have happened. And um, it's, it's, it's easy to get kind of wrapped in and the monotony of like day to day and what's what's next and right. the unknown and all of those things. But 
what's kind of, you know, like you said, there's been a lot of firsts. There's, I, I'm, I'm feeling inspired, right. And there are, every day is different. And, you know, I think during COVID in the beginning, right. It was like three really bad days and then you wait for like the great day or, mm-hmm. you know, something to keep you going. And, um, I think with, with the way that, you know, this, the course of 2020 has run, it's just been, you know, major peaks and, you know, very low valleys and things like that. But with women in soccer, um, the, the future, like you said, is very bright. And I'm, I'm feeling the past couple of months, like just very inspired by what's to come and what's next. And I think that I love the move of our national team players going and playing, um, in Europe. I think that Mm -hmm. that is so awesome for the game. I think it's inspiring younger generations to not just see that, wow, only, you know, 1% of high school players are ever going to get the opportunity to play pro. Like that number is going to continue to increase. So by the time you've got our, you know, 10 and 11 year olds now here, like there's hopefully going to be so many opportunities to play internationally. Um, you know, and hopefully obviously we keep adding, the pro teams here, you know, Sacramento, hopefully we get Mm -hmm. a team in the Bay area, um, you know, like Louisville there's, you know, Austin. I think that there's a lot of really, you know, um, a lot of organizations that are inspired to support the women's game now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that there's a market for it and people are starting to realize that. And that's the sky's the limit. I think, you know, ultimately and this is probably really biased. Obviously we're on a women in soccer podcast, (laughs) but, um, you know, like, there it's an untapped market there there's so much opportunity there's so many parts and pieces of this game um you know ranging from being a player to being a coach to like you said being in marketing being in the front office um in facilities whatever it is Mm -hmm. that it's it's the giant it's a giant waiting to happen and if people invest um in the right ways then the sky's the limit i think you know we're going to take the world over, you yes, know, the, so <laughs> yes. the future yeah. is definitely female. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. So a couple of, uh, kind of wrap up questions that, sure. that, that I want to ask. First of all, what, what, what are some of your goals, like personal goals as a coach? Like, do you want to be a college coach forever? Like what, what, what does the path for Tracy Ham look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I don't even know if I, you know, it sounds like terrible. I had personal goals. I think I've, I've been someone that like, I go where the wind takes me and I provide opportunities for myself, um, Mm. to set myself up for success. I don't know what opportunities exist now. Like I think in 10 years, I might be coaching at a club that doesn't exist yet, you know? Um, and I think I, again, I just try to be the best where where I'm at and really Mm -hmm. focus on what I'm doing in that moment. And with that team and that program, Mm -hmm. um, and you know, so far so good, right. (laughs) I've done, I've done some, you know, some really cool things and I've had, you know, success with all my, my programs, my players have graduated and gone on to, you know, have successful careers, um, whatever they're choosing or families and, um, or both hopefully, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I've got, I have aspirations. And again, I don't, I don't even know what those are yet. Like I I would love to coach pro, but I'd also love to, you know, coach at a big time power five school. Um, you know, I love UC Davis. Maybe I'm here. I'm so happy here. Mm -hmm. I'd love to win a, like start, let's, let's start with a big West championship, you know? Um, and you know, build, build something. I'm a builder. Like I love Mm -hmm. building things and leaving it better than I found it. Um, so you know, I, I'm happy now and I'm just going to invest like I always do in the, you know, people around me. And, um, I, I think that this year has definitely been interesting in terms of it, it, it almost forced me to slow down. Cause I've mm-hmm. been on one for a few years, like deep breath, you know, um, yeah. where I've actually been able to focus on developing like staff and developing people and players around me and giving, like you said, opportunities and, um, you know, seeing kind of where, investing in other people's success, Mm -hmm. um, has really inspired me to like, you know, continue growing in my own way. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we'll see. I don't know. A lot. There's sky's limit. Like I said, there's a big horizon, you know, so I could coach abroad. (laughs) I could coach anywhere. I love Australia. I obviously love to tan and love the beach. (laughs) Um, so, you know, I love that. I love that. (laughs) Okay. Last couple questions. I see you looking at your watch. You're like, <laughs> I, 
No, I know. I know. We all have Sorry. things to do. It's yes. Okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, all last, good. Last couple questions. Um, no, you're fine. And, and this one, I mean, I'm hoping, I think I know your favorite quote, but what's, what's like a quote that like you live by and, and you have set at a, at a, a foundation for your teams and, and just how you do stuff. Sure. I, well, there's the one that I think everybody that has listened to me speak knows, right. And it's how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and to me that just speaks to, you know, your integrity and, um, what you get is what you see in that way. And, you know, there's, um, hold yourself to a higher standard than anybody else expects of you. Right. Like I'm never making excuses. Um, but uh, you know, uh, one of my, one of my favorite quotes, and this is funny because so much part of a uh, coach the you know, the movie got cut out. Right. And mm -hmm. so I actually had like another quote that was like my thing and it didn't get in. So I was like, all right, I got to rock with something else, but, um, all right, let us it's, hear. Uh, well, it's not even like a quote. I don't even know where I heard it, but I was probably on like Instagram or something, you know, hey, it and, doesn't matter. Um, but a lion doesn't need to roar for you to know it's a lion. Hmm. Um, I like that. And to me, that's definitely speaks to who I am. Um, I don't have to talk about what I'm doing or, be, um, you know, like kind of like go above and beyond to make myself known or, you know, you know, kind of front or patronize people or, you know, like coaching world, there's big egos. There's a lot of different personalities that you have to navigate through. And for me, I'm like, it's, it's all about action. You know, it's about perception and the way that you carry yourself and, and follow through and things like that. And so for me, I'm like, I don't need to roar. Like yeah. I'm, I'm confident in what I'm doing and who I am. And I believe in myself. I believe in the people around me. Um, and so that's probably like one of my biggest, you know, mottos and, and it's humbling also, you know, like whenever I feel like maybe I'm like putting myself on a pedestal in some ways, like oh, I've done this or this, and I'm like, no one, you don't need to do that. Like just focus on being better and developing and, and making people around you better. So yeah. Let, let yeah. your body of work speak for yourself. And, exactly. And, you know, pe people are going to form opinions and people are going to be, exactly. you know, have a, their own perceptions, but a hundred, a hundred percent. And that's, again, I think for women too, that's just really important to remind yourself, right. Is that, you know, if you, if other people's perceive or other people perceive something that you've done as like a failure or, uh, you weren't good enough or, you know, whatever. It's like, if you believe in yourself that you knew that you did the right things and that you're taking the right steps, then it doesn't really matter what anybody else thinks. So, yeah. Well, maybe we'll end on that. Cause I, I like, I like that a lot. <laughs> and that, you know, that kind of sums up, you know, who you are. And when it, I was talking to one of your friends, uh, Kim Brady online the mm. other day, and she was so excited and she said, and she doesn't know that I'm telling you this, but she said, Tracy, <laughs> Tracy's one of my favorite people. She's confident and humble. And that there it is. And I was like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to oh. tell her that. So thanks Kim. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. You have a lot of, you have a lot of fans out there. Oh, um, good. Well, I'm a fan of a lot of people. So, you know, well, thank you so much, Tracy, for your time. Um, again, you're an inspiration to me, to a lot of people out there. Keep doing great things. And, um, you know, just hopefully with uh, COVID, hopefully things get back on track for, for your program and for your team. And, you know, we didn't even talk about that, but that must be a whole, whole new challenge. But it's okay. I'm done talking about yeah, it. Everyone's like, in the same boat. I've got nothen new for anyone yeah, that's listening like, at Coaches College. We're all in it together. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so good luck with everything and, you know, excited to see what's next and, and all the great work and all the inspiration you're going to have as you get older like me, yes. like us old farts over here. Well, let's get a socially distant cocktail at the beach. I'm going to yes. road trip down there. Yes. You are welcome Good. to come to San Diego okay. anytime. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, you've listened to women talking soccer and Tracy again. Thanks for everything. Thank you.